So what we're doing here today is measuring the light intensity and fall off from a Gemini 2x1 hard in a traditional uh, set of silks. So we've gridded the floor, starting in the middle here, going out 10 feet each way. So we can then take a measurement at each intersection of the grid on the floor to get some precise details in terms of how the light falls away. We have data sets uh, of the traditional space light as it was, the five kilowatt six lamped fixture, which was the old school way of doing it. We have the same data set measured exactly the same way from years gone by. And so it will allow us to do a direct comparison from one fixture to the next. Take out the slack on the power first if you want. One of the reasons that the lamps were rigged in this way on a rope as we have here with a fixture inside a set of skirts is, is the flexibility it gives on the stage. There is a propensity to rig two by one panels within um, truss boxes essentially. So they're all at the same height above the stage. If you therefore get a situation whereby you've got an actor which is slightly taller or shorter, or you want to increase illumination on a different part of the stage, you're left with changing intensities uh, and messing with light levels. When you're rigging from a rope, it's actually rather more old school. You can drop fixtures in, take them out again, move them around more easily than you can when they're fixed in a hard truss rig, which is why it was a very, very successful way of illuminating a set for a long period of time. So it's a direct comparison with the incandescent fixture. The Gemini t one hard will be running at 3200 Kelvin and full intensity. going to try a couple of different diffusion options. We're going to run it with the ultralight diffusion, as in fact it's configured now, which gives us an even, an even illumination. And we're also going to try it with a dome diffuser, which is slightly heavier diffusion, but gives a different light distribution so we can compare the two models against the original light source. Right, so if I start here, 53.2 foot candles. It looks bizarre, but it's actually the most comfortable way of doing it, 19.8. Whilst ensuring that my presence with the meter does not interfere in any way with the light fall. So bonkers as it looks, it's the most accurate methodology. The combination of attributes that the Gemini T1 hard has really make it very suitable in this environment. It has fantastic output. The broadness of spectrum that it has makes it very comparable to a tungsten fixture. And finally, it's not that heavy. It's only 12 kilos, so you can rig it from a rope and it's not a pain to have to move it, rig it, or generally control it in any way you wish. There's the figures. 53 versus 42 in the center and 17. So it actually outperforms it. That's quite something. It's really even predictable fall off, which is straight line pretty much. The light diffusion is a, is a steeper curve, but lesser curve than the incandescent space light. The reality is both LED options are more even with a more predictable fall off than the incandescent space light. But the interesting thing is that we're actually, with the light diffusion, we're outperforming the tungsten fixture with a nicer fall off. Interesting exercise. Running at full intensity, it was drawing 410 watts compared to a space light, which would be drawing 4.8 kilowatts. It illuminates in the same way that an incandescent space light did back in the day, which was always the preferred method of lighting. And the world has moved towards soft sources, which are two by one in format, which you hang above a stage on the grid. And perhaps now you can go back to a methodology which was always favored in the past but using a modern light source. And I really think this test has demonstrated that perfectly. One is one. It's more even, isn't it? Yeah, but that's a story in itself. It is a story in itself. Actually, because when you think about